Well, welcome Secretary Tutwiler to the Needham Public Schools. Thank you. Wonderful to be here. We, uh, we really appreciate your visit today, getting a chance to see some of our kindergarten classrooms yeah. and our teachers and students. Yeah. Can, you, can you share with us um, uh, what did you see and, and what did you learn today on your visit? I, I saw so much and I learned so much. Uh, all of the classrooms we visited were so vibrant and joyful. I mean, the minute I walked in, kids were deeply engaged uh, with one another, with the teacher. Uh, I think the thing that I enjoyed the most uh, was a center's activity where students were building blocks. One student would build up a, a, a structure, a tower. Uh, one student made a train and the other student had to mimic that. But they were talking about the geometrical shapes that they were using in ways that I'm quite sure I did not uh, when I was five or six years well, old. So the, the program uh, that we that we've uh, we're, we're developing really is trying to give students uh, agency and voice and choice in yep. in uh, in their programming in kindergarten, which we want to continue through the entire yep. uh, you know K-12 uh, continuum. So yep. Uh, yep. believing that will really empower empower learners. Yeah, so, indeed. Yeah. Uh, and I noticed that that's one of your um, Portrait, uh, portrait skill set, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, skill sets around empowerment, and I saw that in every classroom yeah. I visited today. Well, good. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you being here. Now, yeah. so you have been in your new role as uh, the Massachusetts Secretary yeah. of Education for six months now, I think. Six months. Um, and can you share with us? You must be yeah. drinking through a fire hose, but what are you learning about? Uh, 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 well, really, uh, pre-K sixteen education yes. in yeah. the Commonwealth. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, what, what well, you said it. You said it. So. Um, first, I'll say I knew K-12 pretty well, having spent uh, 22 years uh, in the K-12 space. Uh, but the um, Executive Office uh, of Education uh, is the umbrella cabinet uh, for early ed, K-12 and higher ed. And so I've enjoyed thoroughly getting more familiar with the early ed and higher ed spaces. And, you know, I'm seeing incredible things like I saw, like I saw here today in terms of the, the innovation, the thoughtfulness uh, that's being applied in the educational space. And I'm also seeing some challenges, some with which I was already familiar as a former superintendent uh, and are others that I'm just learning for the first time. And so the first six months have been uh, wonderful, but eye-opening at the same time. What are some of the priorities that the, the governor has and that you have as you kind of look um, around in, in Massachusetts and, and what needs to come next? Yeah, right out of the gates, we started with a set of organizing principles, uh, stabilize, heal, transform, that we believe really reflects kind of where we are and where we need to go. The stabilize and heal organizing principles are really around the fact that we realize we're still in a recovery space. Absolutely. Uh, and there are mental health uh, challenges we see across the Commonwealth, all levels, uh, that we need to be thoughtful about addressing. Uh, and then also there's uh, significant issues around staffing, particularly in the early ed and K-12 space that we want to be thoughtful about supporting. And uh, while we would recognize that those challenges and more uh, exist in this recovery space, uh, we also want to lift up the fact that we want to be forward thinking uh, and um, embracing, you know, the next steps uh, in education on all levels. And that's where the transform uh, piece comes in. Uh, and so uh, we're... So far, we're, 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 you know, we're listening, we're, we're engaging with people deeply and trying to craft a path forward. Secretary, one of the things that I know superintendents across the Commonwealth sure. are concerned about is the educator pipeline mm -hmm. and making sure that we have the folks in the classrooms mm -hmm. to really um, uh, bring learning alive and to support our kids mm -hmm. with so many needs, especially after the last sure. few years. Sure. Um, can you comment on some of the things that are, are happening um, in, in your office and beyond that will, you know, will, will help us in, in the field? Yeah, first, uh, I just want to acknowledge uh, I, I had that experience firsthand as a superintendent last year. When I finished the year, we still had vacancies that we weren't able to fill. And unfortunately, those vacancies were in positions that serve our most vulnerable students, yeah. students with disabilities, yeah. students who have behavioral uh, challenges, who need additional supports. And so intimately aware of that challenge and a few things going on that I think will help. Uh, in the short term. One is protecting the emergency license, which allows uh, teachers who have a bachelor's degree to, to go right into the, to the classroom. Mm -hmm. Of course, the district is going to need to provide supports to Absolutely. get them skilled sure. up. Sure. Um, but that, along with uh, some steps that uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is taking with uh, licensure, uh, special education licensure uh, in particular, uh, to make 
access to the classroom a little less burdensome for those who have a deep interest in doing so. In the long term, I'd say things like early college, creating an early college pathway uh, for uh, our where our richest resource is, which is in our high schools right now, uh, to you know first be acquainted uh, with the profession and have a pathway through college and then right back to the communities where they're growing up. I feel like that's going to pay dividends in the long term as well. In the higher ed space, uh, pretty soon we'll be announcing a, a scholarship um, that is in the education space that will make uh, the financial burden a little less for those who have an interest uh, in pursuing a, the field of education. So. There are things uh, that we're working on. There's one thing that I'll lift up that's not tied to any policy or budget, uh, and that has to do with the, um, the narrative around the profession. I think there's a lot of um, uh, negative negativity around the profession of teaching that we really need to band together to clean up. And that means all of us, uh, our Agreed. school committee members, our superintendents, folks at the state level like myself really need to band together to change the narrative around the profession. I, I, you know, I appreciate you saying that. I know that we both started out as teachers right. and uh, the, the, it is, I think, uh, an awesome, the most awesome profession. I, I tell Great. our educators all the time, the most important work going on in this community is what's going on in the classroom. Here, here. Um, and, here, here. Uh, and it's a dynamic and really a, a profession that uh, allows you to be creative, allows you to have an impact um, and it's just so incredibly important for our future. So I, I think that's a, it's a good point, and we'll have to do our part here in Needham to make sure that we're really boosting and elevating ed education so that, uh, and, and the profession so that yeah. we can get more folks in, into the pipeline. Well, I have to tell you, I, uh, thinking about the pipeline for employees yeah. and staff coming up yeah. is critically important. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that you are the Secretary of Education, I think, gives hope to me uh, with your experience you. and background to, to really elevate learning pre-K through 16 yeah. in the Commonwealth. Uh, so Secretary, finally, uh, how is your family and how are you adapting to this new role? What's a, what's a as we conclude here, what's a, what's a brief uh, day in the yeah. life of uh, yeah. the Secretary of Education? F family's doing great. Uh, as you know, I left the superintendency last summer. I had a brief hiatus uh, and wonderful experience at the Bar Foundation before I became Secretary mm -hmm. of Education. I saw a lot of my family uh, during those three months. Uh, the rigors of this uh, role uh, require me to be out and about much more, and all over the country, and all over the and all over the state, which I enjoy. Uh, and actually, I think my kids enjoy. I think they were seeing too much of me during that <laughs> short stint. Uh, but 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 they're doing they're doing awesome. Uh, day in the life, I, I don't think one of the things I really enjoy is that no day is like the other. I mean, today I'm here visiting with you. I've got a higher education meeting happening later on today. I'm going to meet with a member of the legislature. Uh, tomorrow, I'm meeting with 15 community college presidents out on the Cape. Uh, on Friday, I'm doing an Influence 100 thing. And so each day is different uh, and contributes to my learning. So I'm, I'm enjoying it thoroughly. Secretary Patrick Tutwiler, I'm thrilled that you are in the new role. Thank I you. appreciate you taking the time to visit the Native Public Pleasure School today. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right.